This is a story of how I went from eight months pregnant walking into a new yoga studio to owning the place in less than one year. My name is Ashley. I am a yoga studio owner. I'm a yoga teacher, yoga teacher trainer, and yoga teacher mentor and coach for specifically new yoga teachers. And I teach sequencing, cueing, technology, business, and marketing so that you can get out there and actually teach your classes with confidence. But this is a story today about how I unintentionally, really, became a yoga studio owner. It happened like this. The year was 2018 <laughs> and I had just moved from Minnesota to Washington State, a gorgeous location, but I had quit my job. I fell in love with a man. I followed him out here and I got pregnant a month later. And all this happened in the span of like a month or two. New relationship, no job. So not even a new job, but no job. I was pretty much broke, baby on the way, uh, no community, no family nearby, and knew everything. Like I went through about five massive life changes in the span of two months. I don't recommend it, but it, it did bring me a lot of strength getting through it. I got through 2018 and it was hard, but it taught me how to be resilient and strong. And so my ability to get through 2020 and this past year uh, has actually been a lot easier because of that experience in 2018. So when I was eight months pregnant, we had moved to a new town and I, I walked into my first studio class in this very studio. I walked in because I thought, I need yoga. I'm eight months pregnant. I need to chill out. So I took restorative classes. I took the gentle classes. I took vinyasa, whatever they were offering. I just know I needed yoga for my own sanity and the health of myself and my baby. So it was something that I knew I wanted to continue. And it's just, honestly, it's easier at a studio. So I was taking classes at the end of 2018. And as I'm walking out one day, the owner's talking to the manager and says, we don't have anyone to cover the Saturday class. We might have to cancel it. Now that was one of my favorite classes to go to. So as I push the door open, I do a 180 and I'm like, I can teach it. And on the spot, they're like, you're hired. <laughs> That's how it happened. So I had been to several classes. I knew the format. I was a teacher, even though at that time I was, you know, very pregnant. I could probably have a baby at any, any time. They, they knew I knew how to teach and they, they hired me on the spot. And then after that, I had, a, I had my baby. It was a wonderful labor and delivery. Thank you, yoga. And um, I started teaching a couple classes here at the studio. And less than a year goes by. So that was October when I had my son. It was July that she announced, the owner announced that she was closing the studio and that the last class and the last day would be August 15th. I was heartbroken. This had become my family, my community, my refuge, my escape away from, you know, it was my own, it was a safe place for me. It was somewhere where I came to take my classes and to do my yoga practice. And I felt like it was a constant in my life. It was something that grounded me. And a lot of you might feel the same way about your favorite classes and your favorite teachers and your favorite studio. And so you know how heartbreaking it is, or you can imagine when someone says, oh, we're closing. It was, it was really hard. So I sort of just prepared to move on and continue doing my online work and maybe find another studio. So I actually was taking classes elsewhere just to, to check it out. And one day, about a week before she was closing the place for good, I texted her. I go, what's going to happen to the studio once it's closed? They didn't have a plan, actually. There wasn't a plan. It was just going to close. And that was that. And so she, she got back to me almost instantly. And do you know what she said? The text reply was, do you want to buy it? I was like, what? Just like me walking out the door saying, hey, I, I can teach that class. You're hired. It was a, I asked, I actually put myself out there and asked a question. I said, what's going to happen after it closes? And we started that conversation and I had no intentions of ever being a studio owner. I know how much it takes to own a studio. 
My first yoga studio gig as a yoga teacher was with a brand new studio that was just opening up. In fact, I taught the grand opening classes. So I knew the hard work and effort that it took to building a studio and building a community. I had zero to three people in my classes for the first six months or more maybe. I taught 10 classes a week. I was exhausted with very small classes in time they built, but it takes a lot of time. You have to be prepared for a, a, a pretty much a very long time where you're not getting a complete return on your investment just yet. It takes a long time to build. And as a new teacher, you might be in that spot right now where you're thinking, why are my classes so small? Because it takes time, a lot of time and consistency, a lot of hard work, a lot of marketing. And the studio I worked for did a great job with marketing. It just still needed that momentum to continue to grow. And it's more like, like it grows slow for a while, but then it does pick up and there is a lot more. So that did happen, but it took, I'll say two, three, four years. It was about three years before I filled a class. One I had been teaching for three straight years. Every Tuesday, Thursday at 5.30 p.m. I taught a class. I finally at one point had a wait list for that class after three years of teaching. So I just know how hard it is. And I was a new mom, so I had a, a baby that was not even a year old. And she was asking if I wanted to buy this studio. So I thought about it. We talked about it. And within a couple weeks, I had made the decision, yeah, I'll do it. And my deciding factor, the question I asked myself, and I encourage you to ask this question when you have any major decisions to make, is this. Five years from now, if I look back at my decision, would I have regretted it? Or would I regret saying no? Or would I regret saying yes? And I thought about it, and I thought five or 10 years down the road, if I didn't say yes to the potential opportunity of, of taking over the yoga studio, would I have regretted it? Yes, I would have. I thought if I didn't, I would have always wondered what could have happened, what would it have been like had I taken over the studio. So I did it. We came, out with, we came up with a good agreement and at the time, I was actually teaching uh, a yoga teacher training. Actually, I was, I was about to lead a yoga teacher training. So it was the perfect timing. I had a little bit of extra money, a little bit of capital to put in towards the payment of the studio from that yoga teacher training that I had filled. The local YMCA actually was very generous in helping me to promote this yoga teacher training. So we filled it with 10 people. And I led that training half at the YMCA and half at my new yoga studio. And I got to learn what it actually takes to file for an LLC, a business license, insurance, business fees, and all of the business logistics around the actual business of a yoga studio brick and mortar style business. It's not too hard, but it is nice to have a little guidance along the way because some of it can be a little bit confusing. So I got to learn a bunch of strategies and techniques and behind the scenes with studio ownership. They pretty much sold the place to me as is with the props, with the stereo system, with the lights, with everything that I didn't actually have to do anything to this space. I did not create this space. This space is not my own blood, sweat, and tears. I just wanted to continue the community because I know how important it was to me to be here as a practitioner, as someone who loves yoga practice. I wanted that to continue. And I thought, you know what? Let's do this. So that's what happens. And with all the final agreements signed, all the T's crossed and the I's dotted, I ended up opening about, let's see, October, August, September, October, two months later. I opened in um, early October, so less than two months after they closed their doors, we went through all the final negotiations, and I reopened as Ash's Yoga Studio on October 7th. And then you know what happened. That was 2019. 2019, October, we started, and things were going really well. I had taken the skills that I learned building an online business in the past and just transferred those skills over to a yoga studio business. We were on track to make really great progress and to build beyond what it had ever built to before. I was here all the time. I was teaching a bunch of classes. I had a uh, teacher training going on. I led another teacher training that actually finished in June 2020 online, unfortunately, but that's what happens. 
and we were on track to do some really great things at the studio. And then we closed in March. We all know that. We all know that story, right? So we closed in March, and I turned, I, I went from studio owner, local, back to online yoga teaching. And for a while, I did try to do the studio model online, so a virtual studio for the local people. But quite honestly, the local people that come to classes aren't the same people who are attending online classes. Not typically. Not like a very small percentage of the, the in-person people would take virtual classes. So I switched over and I started doing what I absolutely love doing, and I'm still doing it today, is training new yoga teachers. Now, rather than doing a 200-hour yoga teacher training online, uh, because there are a ton of those out there right now, instead, I am the mentor or the coach for new yoga teachers who want to specifically learn simple sequencing strategies for building classes and confident cueing techniques. So how to communicate clearly, how to talk through your classes, and how to come up with a class plan. So those are the two main things that I teach to new yoga teachers, and that's sort of why I'm not necessarily gung-ho to open up this studio again post-pandemic uh, time, uh, because I could open it right now. However, my focus is back to helping new yoga teachers, and I'm doing that through a membership, which you can check out at ashesyoga.com membership. It's a low price membership that allows you to join into two workshops a month with me, with a private community on Facebook, and also ask me questions regarding anything yoga class planning, cueing, and sequencing. That is where I have the most fun, and I can't wait to dive even deeper with the members inside of that community. So those who join right away, get in with me and, and get all the bonuses and all the extra stuff and all my love and attention, and also can help to shape this membership basically a mentorship for new yoga teachers to exactly what you need as a new yoga teacher. So that's what I've been doing. I've also been coaching new yoga teachers in business building strategies and marketing, which is inside my course, Virtual Vinyasa Academy, which will open and close once in a while. So right now it's closed, but at the time you're watching this, maybe it is open. You just have to check the website to see what's what. So I mentor new yoga teachers and I have a lot of fun with it. I know everybody gets uh, so much out of having accountability and having someone there for them to help guide them along the path. So that's what I'm doing now. And that is how I bought a yoga studio and why right now I'm not in yoga studio owner mode. Instead, I'm in the mode of teacher trainer. One of my favorite modes to be in, one of my favorite hats to wear is a yoga teacher who helps other yoga teachers with the struggles that I experienced in the past. Sequencing, cueing, business, marketing, and all the things that, that sort of confuse you right away. So there you have it. I went from moving across the country, getting pregnant, and going, stepping into a random yoga studio to owning the place in really under a year. So that's my story. If you have any questions, comments, or anything, I'd love to hear from you down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and listening along to this story time. And if you want to check out my membership, again, it's at ashesyoga.com slash membership. You get all the details. If you have any direct questions, the best place to reach out to me is probably on Instagram because I'm not there a lot. That would be at ashesyoga. Everything is at ashesyoga, of course. That's my brand. That's my studio. That's what my business is. Thank you for watching and listening along. You can check out one of these other videos if you want more tips on how to be a confident new yoga teacher.